Welcome to a super duper exciting post Oscars edition of Inside Media Weekly. I'm Ryan Bonai. Joining me, he seems to be in a much higher elevated position. Uh, I agree. Kevin Mastos. Apparently, the production team felt you were your chair was not as up to snuff or something. I don't know. Uh, uh, it's the tough par, to be so. short. The pain. <laughs> there are way worse things than being short. Way worse. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks so for exciting. having me. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Pinto gets his normal chair he had last week, so it's uh, he's back. It's, as well. it's a it's a work in progress. We'll get there. <laughs> get all new chairs, all new technology. Mm-hmm. Speaking of new chairs, it's the otters. <laughs> I don't want to do chairs. Yeah, I don't chair. know. Uh, they were eating earlier. Now they're there's one just, hanging out in the, down there yeah. in the corner. And it, it was raining, oh, yeah, and then it stopped, and now it's raining again. Aww. The poor otters. We're two for two on otters. Yeah, yeah they, that's, that's pretty good. They were feeding good. them. Uh, Usually we're a disaster. <laughs> Water. Remember, they're doing all sorts of stuff, and then we cut in. I, I get a feeling, and again, I'm going to have to go back and look at the historical episodes, that they've changed the Maybe enclosure. Maybe you should talk to the uh, Inside Media Weekly historian. Do we have one? <laughs> <laughs> Our fan might Could be able to tell you. you. No one. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what's going on. So, you know... Unfortunately, nothing exciting happened at the Oscars. Oh. There were no new, real news stories, so there's not going to be much to talk about this I'm week. I'm going to put it aside out. I watched Coda last night. And? Excellent. Good. I liked it a lot. It was uh. um, moving. I felt a tear come to my eye. Wow. All pretty right. impressive. I thought it was pretty nice. darn good. Well, I always enjoy the week or weeks leading up to the Oscars because typically, you know, you're putting a microphone in front of so many celebrities that they're bound to say an occasional off scripted thing that might not go over well. And there were a few at a couple of the, uh, <laughs> a couple of the awards ceremonies that preceded, um, you know, um, a couple that were, you know, famous were Jane Campion, uh, director of power of the dog was, had won best director for, I think critics choice awards or one of those, but then the Serena, well, Serena and Venus Williams, the sisters were there. And she mentioned that, uh, basically saying that her accomplishment was, you know, was big because not as, or theirs wasn't as big because uh, they don't have to play with men. And, and I thought I saw her name <coughs> in the news and I did not yeah, ever. Well, and <laughs> oh. thinking, but African American female tennis players and well, but anyway, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> did not know that. that must have been one of the blocked links. Well, and then <laughs> and then uh, and then you heard I don't know just a heard. little. <laughs> I've seen a lot of the troll. The moon. <laughs> and then, uh, if you heard Steven Spielberg too, uh, was talking about Squid Game, and <laughs> I think he was also winning some awards. Oh, they give so many awards out the the week before. Lots of awards. But uh, he had mentioned that he was used to having to have A list actors in movies, and then said, and he was com- complimenting Squid Game on having no name actors. And this is kind of like wool. Well just because you're not aware of them, they're, <laughs> you know, maybe, I mean, they're successful in Korea, to, but to call them no-name actors. He's trying to be nice and <laughs> insulting everyone along the yeah, way. Yeah, you get what he's trying to say, but didn't really say it. Uh, he's, nice Steven way. Spielberg's not anti-streaming movies and stuff. Is he like, uh, or is he? I thought he was. The, wasn't he one of the ones that was fussing Scorsese about? Scorsese is definitely, like, Scorsese was very anti-streaming, wasn't he? And Anti-Netflix. Wasn't the last movie released on Netflix? Well, now, I okay. mean, you know, as <laughs> we've said before, when the truck <laughs> right. comes with all the cash in it. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Here's a giant pile of money. Okay. I can probably <laughs> do something. We'd like your movie to only stream here, and here's a bigger truck of money. All right, all right, all right. we're in. All right, a few things did happen at the Oscars. We uh, will get to the, the big, the big uh, controversial event, but before we do that, let's talk about what happened. Um Dune, kind of a surprise here, I guess. Uh, you know, won six awards, not necessarily the biggest categories, but it was the biggest winner as far as the number of uh, um, statues that it took home. And Coda did take home three, of course, best picture. Um, with that power, of the dog had twelve nominations going in, only won one for best uh, best director. But were there any major surprises to you? The Eyes of Tammy Faye had two wins. Belfast just won. Uh, Cruella. Drive my car and Kanto, King Richard, of course. I kind of was surprised that Kanto didn't win the song. Yeah, I, yeah. Actually, going in and their Billie Eilish song came on, I was like, "And Kanto's gonna win, honey. Don't worry about it." And I was like, "Oh, looks like you were right." 
You're, and it's a great song, and it was performed beautifully. Um, but Disney made the error of not nominating the um, Bruno song. You could just nominate them all. Uh, no, they they actually put up one. They're like, for your consideration, this. So it's part of the campaign. We didn't uh, <laughs> Lin-Man, Emmanuel, man, sorry, man, away, Emmanuel say he didn't think much of the song, so he didn't. Because obviously, I mean these. These movie studios put up tens of thousands of dollars, mm-hmm. I guess, in order to get these movies considered and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And he kind of was like, oh, you know, he didn't think that much of the song enough to have it be nominated. And I don't think, I don't think there was all the categories, but I think I heard that Best Picture this year was ranked choice voting. Like you rank all, like if there's ten nominees, you rank them oh, yeah. hmm. first to last, and you're in. So theoretically, a movie that never got a first place vote could, could end up won. winning Best Picture if everybody ranks it second. And people, you know, in the first place gets split amongst a different a bunch of different other movies and so on and so forth. And I don't know if they've released those results or anything and showed the... I would, I'd be surprised if they left any yeah. breakdown, but... I, I don't think they ever have or would necessarily. I haven't seen anything about it, but I, that, that's what I heard. There was, uh, yeah, ranking it, so, like, something could have been a surprise, mm-hmm. theoretically, with... I think it makes more sense. It'd be a fairer way of voting. If you've got people set up and, you know, um, there's a sort of divide between things. But like you said, could lead to a surprise result. Yeah, well, I mean, and we've talked before about, you know, what wins Best Picture. And don't want 20 years later, you're like, wait, that one Best, mm-hmm. pic- that one best Picture? Um, you know, what is – and there's really no criteria for what makes it Best Picture. It's mm-hmm. kind of like the most valuable player award in sports. It's mm-hmm. like, is it – do you have to be in the playoffs or is it just the most valuable person? People have their own kind of criteria from – time to time on how they rank it but you know this put this podcast i was listening was talking about the the best picture being like you know dune is like the movie that like universally seemed to be loved in a lot of different ways and really had no chance of winning best picture no but so it was kind of did you see dune i have not it was excellent it really was um so th- this person's point was it should maybe win best picture because nobody's ever been able to make something that people like yeah. And everybody loves this one. If, yeah. like, everybody it really who was likes very Dune, good. Everyone who likes Dune liked this movie. <clears throat> it was excellent. It was excellent. Um, well, Dune 2 is in the works, I believe, right? Yes. Right. Well, it's, it's what, one-third of the book? Yes. Yeah. One-fourth one of the book? Right. right. And, and there's even a series of books. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. <laughs> well, and also what was interesting, too, uh, of course, this, this trend broke a long time ago, but for a, a long time, the what was it the best director? Uh, no, the best editing always won best picture. They were tied kind of at the hip for hmm. Weren't director and picture tied for years and years and years as well? Best director, best picture, I thought was a lot of t- tied together. There was that, that trend broke, though, like, yeah. in, I think in the late 90s, early 2000s. But I think it was a trend for a while. All right. Let's. <laughs> Heard around the world. So, uh, first of all, so Chris Rock makes a, a joke about. Will Smith's wife. An um, unkind joke. A very unkind joke about uh, health condition she has. Um, he Not got, about health condition she has. No, just to, um, comparing well, right. her appearance. That's right. We're comparing her to, appearance to uh, a really poorly received <laughs> Demi Moore movie from uh, many, many years ago. Um, many people probably didn't. Well, I guess the Oscars has a kind of an older viewing audience. Oh, yeah. yeah a, a lot of my students are like, <laughs> I wasn't even aware that they were on. Jane. Yeah. Right. I was going to say, anybody under the age of... 30 mm, probably yeah. doesn't know G.I. Jane mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, they said this is one of the craziest Oscar moments you'll ever see um, for those that don't know um, that were waiting <laughs> waiting for the news I think if you're watching weekly. this show yeah you are aware yeah Will happened. Smith did get up um, nobody stopped him he went up and slapped Chris Rock in the face and then sat back down and then screamed at him from his seat um, telling him to leave his wife out of his jokes basically um, from that point forward, it's a stronger connotation. Well, than yes, that, but yes, was, yeah, 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 and it was repeated. Um, <laughs> and Just to be clear, and was uh, muted out of the American broadcast, but apparently played uh, in its entirety in other places internationally. Uh-huh. So, first of all, I got to ask because there's a lot of conspiracy out there that this is staged. These two guys thought this would be funny ahead of time. Is there any chance? Is, I mean, I, it's hard to figure there would be anything to gain, but is there any chance at all this is? There's a, a chance, stunt? but a slim one. I was going to say, there's always a chance of stuff. It, if the last three years have taught us anything, yes. there's, a, there's always a chance. But it seems like 
it doesn't seem like there's much to be gained no. in the whole scenario. So I don't no, really know anyone. why there would be. No. I don't think Chris Rock looked good from any of this. I mean, he looked less terrible, maybe, is the what I'd give him. Um, again, if that, let's say the joke was made and then they moved on from it and nothing happened, I don't think necessarily people would still be talking about Chris Rock's mean joke. But. And certainly they wouldn't call the police or police reports over it. But right. Of course, my immediate thought with this is, you know, you, you had a... Uh, it's, it's interesting to watch. It's always interesting to watch people debate stuff after the fact online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a surprise in social media. But, you know, there's people that are kind of defending either side. And, you know, my, my immediate thought was that the show was hosted by three female comedians. Had Will Smith got up and struck one of the female comedians, would there even be a discussion of, oh, well, he's defending his wife, he's justified oh, in any way, shape, yeah, or form. Right. I mean, nope. his, his career would be over. Mm, well, nope. I don't know about over, but it would be seriously harmed. He'd go, he'd spend some time in jail or whatever. Um, but, uh, so I, I find it interesting because I, I've been curious to hear people say, I don't condone violence, but, uh-uh. but if you say, but then uh-huh. to me, they, maybe they don't know what condone means. <laughs> but, uh, so of course, Will Smith sort of kind of apologized in his speech and then gave a bigger apology afterwards. Yeah, the I mean, kind of apology I think is the real moment there. I mean, yeah. you, you have a lot of people coming to, you know, step up, stand behind, do whatever. I mean, Sam Jackson embracing him, uh, talking with Denzel in between during. I mean, all of those things to say, hey, here's your opportunity to get over this. And I think was interested in saving his career and didn't. Um, it was very much a, not necessarily entirely a, I apologize for the way you feel, but it was like, I'm really sorry that I embarrassed you. Not, I'm sorry necessarily for what I did mm-hmm. or finding a justification for it. Uh, you do crazy things in the name of love. Uh, yeah, but, um, I mean, defending your honor is very different than defending someone. Um, defending your wife's honor or, I mean, don't get me wrong, the joke was not in great taste. It was a joke. I mean, had again, had it ended there, you wouldn't have gone to the cops and be like, okay, um, Will, are you, are you going to file a police report about this joke? You know, oh no, he's decided not to file a police report over that really mean joke. Yeah, I think in the history of jokes at the Oscar or any of these award shows, I'm sure there's been worse sure. jokes that people thought would go over better and obviously didn't. Obviously, there's you know when you're hosting this, you're or presenting or trying to do something, you're you're always you know with comedy in, in general, you're pushing a boundary, you're pushing a limit, trying to get the the reaction, and you know sometimes they fall terribly flat and. Mm-hmm. I mean, this probably would have been one of those scenarios to some degree. Like you said, had there, had there been the joke and that was it, probably wouldn't have, people wouldn't have been discussing the terrible joke for days and weeks to come after the show. One of the most interesting things I heard was how many jokes did Will Smith's character make on The Fresh Prince about Uncle Phil being fat or bald? How many of those jokes were in <laughs> moments? Oh, Uncle Phil. And I was like, oh... Yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, bald jokes yeah, about his uncle. And I mean, Fresh Prince is what, like the oh, 90s, 90s, 2000s? Right. Different time, yeah, it's different a whole era. different, yeah, the whole right. different Absolutely realm and so on and so forth. And I mean, there is, you know, like you said, it's a whole different world now. Um, but yeah, had, I mean, but had the show portrayed Carlton coming up and smacking him across yeah, the face? No, I mean, like, oh, wow, that I can't believe that happened. And I'm not saying, again, not saying the joke was right and appropriate, sure. whatever, but. I did read a tweet that said, like, he got in one little fight and, and all, all this broke out, like, quoting the theme song from, from, from the show, which I did, I did get a chuckle out of. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. So, and, and, and the, other, the other thing I went to in my head, instantaneously, was, because it was interesting that, I mean, of course, Will Smith's at the front table there, and he literally had, like, three feet to go, but I was thinking, you know, if someone had come four or five tables back a, a d-list celebrity or a, you know a b-list celebrity would they be tackled Someone before they nominated because i'm sure as he as he approaches you're like i gotta oh, imagine going on i gotta show. imagine nobody thought right. this was coming like pe- like you know security for lack of a better term that was there probably was like oh it's just you know, i don't know what's gonna happen but we're not i don't think anybody in their wildest dream like 
I had it on in the background without without a lot of volume watching it. I kind of saw it happen, and I was kind of like, wait, what just happened? And like I said, it didn't have volume. It wasn't real loud. Um, so I was like, did that really just happen? I watched it happen, and again, it was censored or taken out for the U.S. audiences. But watching it again from the versions, two things struck me. Number one, okay, he, he comes up and he's hiding it, well, and smacks him. You know, and whether or not it was a hard smack or whatever is inconsequential. But when he turns, there's a shot, maybe half a second or so, and he's strutting. Like, the look on his face is, I'm proud of this moment. That's first. Second was after he sat down and Chris Rock is stunned by what, what's happening here and has difficulty going on with the script or whatever happens next, he yells that outburst, keep my wife's name out of your mouth, expletive, twice. And that's a moment where he knows the world is watching and chooses to go this far twice. Um, I mean, that, that to me is, is out of character for a person at an assembly. And I know already I've read reports that the Academy is already dealing with what do we do now? Do we punish the guy? Do we pull him? Whoopi Goldberg him? said they're gonna, there'll be some ramifications, but he's not going to lose his Oscar. Because she's on the she's one on the main committee or whatever oh. the board. I mean, but what happens next? I mean, if this happens again, mm-hmm. then what? I mean, next year somebody tells a mean joke and somebody comes up. Do you allow them to come up? Do you stop them? Do you pull them? Do you get in front of them? Something is that a different you. standard? Uh, I something I, like the jokes the joke well, list next year might not be pushing the limit as much. I remember they had that controversy at the Super Bowl and everything, and next year it was like, let's bring old people out who can't do those things. <laughs> remember? It wasn't, wasn't the next year the Rolling Stones? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> controversy, but not really sure. Uh, so uh, are there, I mean, any long-term ramifications <clears throat> for Will Smith career-wise? I mean, I mean, will there be I, any I dings so. to his... Yes. I mean, there'll be something. I mean, I don't think, I don't think he'll, I think it'll work again. Oh, he'll... Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's like he's going to be out of Hollywood I mean, or anything. Mel but. Gibson has worked. <laughs> but certainly not making as much money now. Um, I don't think he'll be... I don't think he'll be nominated for another anything. Be grateful he won that, because that's. I don't think he's going to be nominated for anything ever again. So did they say... I, I, there's been so much coverage, I haven't really noticed. But did they say... Uh, with these kind of presentations, I mean, obviously... <laughs> As we watch a lot of these award shows, it's patently clear. A lot of it is scripted. They're reading off a teleprompter. Mm. Was there any discussion about whether Chris Rock's stuff had, you know, basically I haven't heard anything. either had been approved or whatever the, the jokes or if he was completely going off the cuff? Or I don't know. I, I would expect that stays very hidden, whether it was his writing, whether it was somebody else's writing that he was reading, or if it was that moment. I mean, coming out and saying the show's yeah. not going to admit that they, yeah, we Mm-mm. we allowed all we you know we approved all these and um, and stuff going forward. So, all right, uh, definitely one of the craziest things. What did uh, Chris Rock say at the way end? This is uh, the craziest Chris, thing or, uh, ever on television, or something. Most like controversial that. hour on television, or whatever, something along those lines. And you know, I'll be curious to see. You know Chris Rock's response because he has not responded yet. I don't that I've seen anyway um, to this. I know that there was talk about whether he would file charges and that sort of thing. And I, you know, he's not. I can't oh. imagine he's going to go that. No, I don't think he said, that, he said no. I thought I read right. He already no said charges. no. But um, but like, is he going to acknowledge this in any way, shape, or form? Or um, just never talk about it again? Because he did. <laughs> he make, does interviews and no one asks. Because he did make a Jada Pickens Smith joke previous 16. Oscars um, 16. when when um, they stayed home. Um, we're protesting the, the Oscars, so uh, be curious to see because so people were trying to say that there was a, a rift between them, long standing. Um, it's hard to say what's going on. Yeah, it's tough to know. It is tough to know. Speaking of tough to know, why did they do this? Do what? Why, why, why? So, oh, we don't talk about Bruno, <laughs> obviously, a well beloved song already. <laughs> Um, people were so excited. I, I be honest, I didn't see this. Uh, I, didn't heard see I didn't see it. That they're like, oh, the cast is going to come do a live action version of uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno. The actors came out, sang, what, one line, and then um, it became the Megan Thee Stallion rap thing where she just went on talking about the Oscars and stuff like that. But basically, 
I feel like that they sidelined all the actors um, in this, you know, this great moment to showcase this song, um, to turn it into something else, to a remix version. I have no idea anything about this. <laughs> I, I did I, not know this was a thing or this happened at all. I like the song. It's a good song. Um, I, I think this was... Well, the Bruno? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like the performance. It, just, it felt to me like um, a bunch of people got on the phone and were like, I want to be in this. I want to be there. Put me in it. Do something for me. And then it became a whole lineup of people. Not necessarily we all we are the world, but a lot of people singing this moment of these songs to get in there. So I want to be a part of it. It just was weird to me to have the performance of this song that wasn't nominated for it in mm. the Oscars. Okay. So that was the weirdest thing. Well, it wasn't a part of their they, – they did a lot more tributes to movies, the you know, The Godfather, mm-hmm. the what, – what was Pulp 30? Fiction. What was 30 years ago? Um, Something was 30 years ago. I forget what it was. Would that be 1992? Yeah. It was, it was something. It was – was it – yeah. Pulp Fiction was there. Um, maybe that was it. Maybe it was 30 years of Pulp Fiction. No, no. Pulp Fiction was 90. I was going to say it was late, mid 90s, wasn't it? Four. I think it was 94 Oscars. But um, that's the year of. Film. They did a lot more. A lot more things to entertain people instead mm-hmm. of just reading names, speech, reading names, speech. They tried to. Ha- how many? They had more musical performances than songs were nominated. Mm-hmm. What, there was more than just Bruno. Bruno wasn't the only song that no. was performed that wasn't nominated for anything, correct? Mm hmm. Um, so I think they were trying to get, they were trying to do things to get more audience. Obviously, after the their Beyonce lead, I didn't watch the beginning of the Oscars, but I know there was some kind of performance that was pre-recorded. Yes, as well. Oh, it's being a pre-recorded. What do you think about the switching of the um, awards that were pre-recorded that were sort of slipped into the presentation? Um, it didn't bother me, but I didn't watch it as closely as I as I typically would. Um, you know, I guess getting older. and kids of mm-hmm. certain ages to mm-hmm. sit down uninterrupted and watch something for you know what sometimes can be pushing four hours at the academy awards doesn't necessarily happen mm-hmm. as often so i wasn't watching it as closely as i typically did but i didn't I, i'm not terribly mad about that but a lot of these people you know the oscar fans or the oscar fans like mm-hmm. people who watch it are pretty passionate <laughs> about movies and, and what they're watching and i think the the, the real dedicated ones were kind of before the show, didn't like the idea of the pre-recorded awards. I don't know how they felt afterwards. I haven't read any reviews. Of course, I feel like most of the time, like growing up, be, they would have the, you know, all the technical awards would be the day, day before. before. Well, they still have awards in, like that, don't they? But they going present them now. But even the, the stuff day, that I, I feel believe. like is pretty big ish, bigger now. I don't know about the biggest award, maybe, but it was always like going into commercial break. And oh, by the way, here's. Some I thought they had the technical dinner. Don't they do? Don't, don't, didn't, wasn't there always? In the past years, there was, and these mm-hmm. awards were presented earlier. Were presented to, yeah. yesterday at, yesterday at the technical they, dinner or they something. They slipped them into the production this time around. Well, no, no, they took off some categories that were always on air mm-hmm. and did them before the them show. Out. So these categories that were they were slipping in and showing the speeches mm-hmm. were traditionally categories that oh. would have been read live on the air during the actual show. So there was usually like tw- like twenty. Let's say there's twenty two categories. They took like seven and did them before. And only did 15 live during the actual Oscar telecast from 8 o'clock on. The one that I thought was totally out of place was the um, costumer from Cruella. I was, she was like, she talked way, way too long. I'm like, you're the costumer for Cruella. Take your word, thank you, say, I love you, mom, love you, significant other, I'm out of here. But I was like, that was an uncomfortable couple of I always find it really uncomfortable when they started trying to play, play, the, play them off. Play oh. the music. It's so, I feel well, like that's worse. When they start that. playing the well, music. and There were a few people that I was like, you're not going to play them out. The winner for best actor, I was like, you could stay up here for a month and we just keep listening to you. It doesn't matter. And it's something striking to me. And again, I watched the movie last night, so I'm really in love with this film, was the interpreter was breaking down interpreting for him. Talking about, I was like, oh my gosh. The... Um, his father was a total inspiration for him and got in a car accident, paralyzed from the neck down, and so can no longer sign with his son. I was like, oh, my goodness. And now he's winning the Oscar. I mean, I felt that moment when he was presenting. Was like, you, you can stay for a month. Keep talking. Not a problem. Go right ahead. So you saw Coda before the Oscars? I watched it last night. Okay. Like So Monday and, night, and it was phenomenal. And we didn't even talk about the first streaming movie sure to win. win best picture i obviously won't be the last i imagine there'll be 
quite a few coming forward. I've not seen all of them. A friend of mine who's always watching all the movies beforehand said he liked Belfast a little bit more, but it was still very good, very worthy. So, all right, I'll trust you, Scott. It's not a crash situation. No. <laughs> and I liked Crash. I didn't hate it. I mean... It was fine. Yeah. That's how I am. Just to, just to think back, when you hear Best Picture, like, that was the best movie of that year? Not like Shape of Water. <laughs> not like, what was the one? Uh, that was Mid. Last, last Emperor. Ugh. I know, Mid. <laughs> <laughs> last Emperor, terrible. Speaking of terrible, it's not terrible. English uh, Patient is way down there, though. This past weekend, the, the Batman does not win. Yeah, we Lost totally City called that wrong. Tickets. I don't even know what Lost City is. That's your Channing Tatum, yes. uh, Sandra Bullock uh, masterpiece. Oh, is that what and that's called? Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. Sorry, I, got, I got in trouble last time for not saying, saying him. Um, Daniel Radcliffe. And I was, I was uh, misinformed uh, last time. By just my own research, uh, everything, <laughs> I'm everything misinformed, I'm misinformed myself. myself. <laughs> everything, everywhere, all at once uh, was just a, a ten theater release, so that's why it's uh, way down at number thirteen. Um, but uh, the Batman's still doing uh, amazing, amazing work. It's now number four all time uh, for the Batman series, and is closing in on uh, Joker to become number three. Hmm. Um, if you consider Joker. I do. You have to. Batman. I, I, I mean, think it's obviously in the. This is domestic, right? Domestic, yes. What's this uh, weekend, Bonai? So this weekend, I. Wow, that's a good uh, transition to something you're not ready for at so, all. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Morbius is coming out finally. I've been seeing this the weekend. trailers for it. No, like crazy. It just look I'm surprised oh. that it's PG-13. I guess just the trailers look. I mean, I feel like I'm watching as dark a movie as Venom or something like that um, in the, the trailer. Did you watch Venom? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking from a rating. I'm talking from a trailer rating standpoint. It looks like it's going to be uh, a, a pretty dark PG-13 film, but... Yeah, Venom I wouldn't call dark. Okay. Venom was more light, fun, silly, crazy. Like Deadpool. Well, we're out of time. Uh, I was gonna, we didn't even get to the. You brought us some topics. I did. And we're going to put we'll them right on the list. We'll and get oh, to them next time. Next time and then uh, today, the newest Top Gun Maverick trailer uh, debuted. All this big deal about Val Kilmer. You know, Val Kilmer, when are we going to go see Val Kilmer? He's in a picture on the wall in I'm one shot me. so far. <laughs> they have, we haven't seen him. Yes. haven't seen him yet. But that's all. Uh, we'll have to see how Morbius does against the Batman and. Um, you think it's going to? All right. Yeah, I don't think it's going to have a huge opening weekend, but I think we'll beat the Batman. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for on this edition of Inside Media Weekly. Thanks for joining us. If the Batman made $20 million, it's going to go down.